and welcome to episode 16 of Tweet All About It. This week we are talking about the London Stadium Pigeons, Mark Noble's unique approach to being sporting director and our best signings. We've got a lot to catch up on so let's kick off episode 16. Since we last spoke, West Ham drew 1-1 with Chelsea, making us unbeaten in four games as well as having just the one loss in 2023 so far. While we're still a long way off last season's form, we do seem to be finding some sort of consistency, which hopefully we can continue to build on. Speaking of the Chelsea game, there are many talking points for us to discuss. Before it began, we had this little hammer pull a handshake away to do this to Thiago Silva. The first half of the game saw Paqueta go off with a shoulder injury, so hopefully that's nothing too serious and there were a lot of times where Chelsea broke through our lines to be one-on-one -on -one with Fabianski. João Felix was a handful for our defenders using his speed to get ahead with a perfectly timed run to put Chelsea in the lead. Then just 12 minutes later Sue Fell put in a brilliant cross which Bowen headed on and Emerson finished. Amidst various VAR checks, there was also this controversial moment that was ignored by VAR, where Suchek quite clearly handled the ball. However, I am certainly not complaining after the countless decisions that have previously gone against us. For anybody who had forgotten, back in September, we lost 2-1 to Chelsea with a disallowed goal when Mendy threw himself at Bowen's feet in the build-up to Corne's goal, which made it that little bit sweeter. So the game ended 1-1 with a stronger second half, but still a lot of room for improvement ahead of our next game against Spurs. That point puts us 16th in the table, two points clear of the relegation zone. Another talking point from the Chelsea game was the gang of pigeons that descended upon the London Stadium and spent 90 minutes trying to get the best view in the ground. Twitter was full of people admiring the pigeons formation, which they regularly changed. As you can see from these posts, there is no denying that they were dominant for most of the game and were thoroughly entertaining. Great work from the pigeons. In other news, Mark Noble went on Ben Foster's podcast and said some really interesting things about his approach to being West Ham's sporting director. He's doing it in a way that nobody has done before, training with every age group from the under 12s upwards, so he gets to know every single player. On the podcast, he spoke about the importance of a five-year plan for players and how he's able to learn their strengths and weaknesses by training alongside them, giving advice along the way instead of just watching from the touchlines. Just one of the quotes from this was, I've taken it personally, the trans transition between Chadwell Heath and Rush Green where the first team train, I need to get as many players to there as possible. Nobes has also acknowledged that we don't have the same type of facilities that Leicester or Spurs have, but has said that he wants it to be about the people. It definitely looks like this could be the beginning of an increase in talent coming from the youth teams into the first team. I asked for your predictions ahead of the Chelsea game and we had three correct guesses from Claret and Blues guy, Peter and Ozzy. So well done to you all. This week, we've been talking about the best signings in the last five years with votes for Fabianski, Aguerd, Emerson, Downs and Dawson. While some have been bargains and pleasant surprises, others are still early in their careers at West Ham, so it will definitely be interesting to see what happens in the coming year. It's time for your fantasy football update and we have had plenty of movement at the top of the table with Melina Ryan moving up to third position, Ben Carter in second and Croyd Moffat sitting at the top of the table on an impressive 1,500 points. Tweet of the week goes to Adam Leatherbarrow with this brilliant sponsorship idea after the pigeon pitch invasion. And question of the week is, who do you think our best signing in the last five years is and why do you think that they have been the best? That's all for episode 16, so comment below with your favourite signing in the last five years. Tag me in your favourite tweets to get them featured. And until next time, come on you irons. Bye.